everyone and welcome to today's art stream uh, thank you all so much for joining me today uh, as you can see we are working on some new stuff um, uh, we had some elves on I think we were working on elves tools and dragonborn on Wednesday and today we are working on uh, an air ganassi which is this particular character here and we are also gonna be working on uh, this character who is a drow uh, Ranger, who's got a very cool design, we're going to be lining them later. Uh, but first, we are going to do the colour for this lovely Ganassi. Uh, Shark Lemons, how am I doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's Friday, which means uh, almost at the end of the week, which means I can get takeaway and chill out tonight. Um, usually, I only do one takeaway every fortnight, but uh, we got one for free the other night because delivery made a mistake, so I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's get to cracking with this. We're going to go straight into the colouring for this lovely character. Um, they are an Eganassi, as I mentioned earlier. 
Um, they are going to have a very rich kind of purpley brown skin. And so I'm starting that with a nice rich um, kind of red derived uh, brown kind of base color. So I'm just gonna size my brush up a bit and kind of continue where I started as I like, barely just started putting down the base layer for this scale. Oh, fantastic! Shark Lemons, that sounds like a very good end to the week. <laughs> Thank you so much to uh, Chrono Morel and Tinakt for the follows. That's very, very kind of you. I hope you enjoy the stream. When did I start getting into digital art? Um, digital art I have been doing since I was about... Oh, I want to say I was about 15 when I started digital art, so I've been doing digital art for about 10 years. Um, and I started out with a Intuo 4 tablet, I think, what the small one um, I would have got. And uh, my school's rather old version, I think we had Photoshop 3. We had quite an old copy of Photoshop on my school computers. And yeah, that's where I first got into Schlatt. I also used uh, Coral, one of the basic Coral packages, like the cheap tryout version, like the equivalent of Photoshop Lightroom. Um, to Photoshop, like the full, no, the equivalent of like Photoshop elements to the full Photoshop. Um, and I used that to kind of mess around when I was about 15 and kind of get the hang of it. But um, yeah, so yeah, I've been doing it for about 10 years now. Oh, and good morning from the Pacific Northwest. Good evening from the south of the UK. <laughs> oh, Verma, thank you so much. Uh, don't worry at all. Um, I'm just very, very touched that you dropped by. Whoop, Photoshop, are you okay? Are you okay, buddy? There you go. Uh, thank you so much, Steve Gibbs, for the sub. That's incredibly kind of you. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of today's stream, and thank you. What am I doing? I've just realized I've been doing this in two different layers. At least it wasn't skin layer. Let's just merge this together. There we go. <laughs> hey, Endless Wanderings, thank you very much. Uh, you're looking cool, too. Let's just fill in that space there, and we're gonna go around and fill in all those edges because they leave those nasty looking little white lines. We don't like those very much. Les F, thank you so much for the sub as well. Goodness gracious, subs just mean the world to small streamers like myself. Honestly, they help out so much with kind of passive income. Um, so thank you so very much. You know what they say, every sub is sacred. At least I think that's what I think that's what the Monty Python song's about, right? Okay, uh, I'm just gonna fill in. She's got kind of like some shoulder showing and a bit of the neckline, so I'm also just gonna go ahead and fill those in now. I must admit, I I love painting Ganassi characters. They're definitely one of my favorites. There's just something so I don't know, so like fun about them. going to basically just show the top of her shoulder here um it's just a portrait so we're not going to go down too far there we go and if we finish doing the line art for um the the elf character as well i need something else to do i've got project i was working on last week i can bring bring back up we can do some more on that i have so many things on going at the same time <laughs> It's been so busy. <laughs> but you know, I, it's a good thing and I should be grateful for, but goodness gracious me. I have a lot going on right now. Okay, so there is our base layer for the skin. Um, so I'm just gonna save quickly. And the next thing we wanna do is make sure this little button here is pressed. It's the alpha lock. I'm sure most of you who watch this channel are familiar with it by now. It's one of my favorite tools. Um, and then uh, we are going to grab a much, I wanna go much pinkier because we've got this purple kind of vibe that we're going to be bringing into this piece as we go on. So I'm going to test making the blush a lot more pink than the surrounding skin tone. Ooh, yeah, I can see, I can see myself liking this. Basically, we want to get that ethereal uh, feeling going with this character because they are an egg and assy. Uh, whoops, that brush is way too big. I think that's about right. But then as usual, I'm drawing like a, a blush mask across um, the front of the character's face. 
And don't worry, we are going to have other areas of the more purple colour. <laughs> have I ever had a picture made into a miniature? Not yet. Um, that's not something that's happened yet, uh, but I can't give away too much, but um, that, uh, that might be happening to me fairly soon on a more professional context, but I can't give away any more. <laughs> All I can say is I'm excited. All right, so we've basically blended in that purpliness. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that purple into a few other places, like the tip of the ear. And I actually want some of this purple coming around the hairline um, because the commissioner said that they, there's more kind of purpley blue as you get towards the hairline. So just gonna blend that in there. A bit more blending. This character is a little bit more complex than most that I usually do. Uh, in this style because of the nice kind of variations in the skin tone um, because Ganassi is super cute hey Uriel Actea welcome have I done many Warforged character drawings I have done a few Warforged actually um, I haven't done any for a little while now um, but yeah I do them I'm not I'm not such a fan of doing Warforged mostly because uh, I'm, I don't really paint mechs it's not really my strong point I'm much better with organic life forms um, that made me sound like an alien, I just realised. Um, but, um, I, I still do them, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, Verma, thank you so much, that's very kind. Alright, so we've got this kind of purple blush coming in now. Um, I'm just going to bring up my reference for this lovely character, just so I can check. Blah, 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 blah. Where, where are they? Where have you gone? This is why I'm looking forward to streamlining all of my commission stuff because I've got so many disparate emails here. Um, la 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 la. There it is. Okay, lovely. So we've got the purplish tint and kind of blue freckles and spots, kind of kind of blue, blue facial markings coming in near the hairline, which I can totally play with. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to play with the skin tone a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into color balance, which is a Kind of fun little tool and we can push certain colors in the skin tone so we can push it more towards blue if we want to um there are lots of cool things we can do here i'm gonna leave it about there i think because then yeah i think that's fun uh unfortunately um nightbot will jump on you if you post links purely because we've had a lot of spam bots recently that have been kind of spamming links in chat so sadly not something i'm able to do at the moment all right, let's go for some shading. Let's start off with a slightly darker purple than the surrounding skin tone and a nice large brush. And we are just gonna start by adding some shading in the front corners of each eye. <laughs> Dead long legs one, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the process of seeing my artwork. Uh, kind of then portrayed in other ways. I used to work for games companies, so uh, seeing my designs kind of brought into 3D or, or animated was always really, really cool. Okay, so uh, with this shadow color, we're basically going to cover the eyes um, to kind of show the edges of the eyelids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we can use this purple to go ahead and shade the nose. Also, our copy of Pokemon Snap finally arrived yesterday, so I started playing that last night, and oh, it's so adorable. My only criticism is that I haven't found an Eevee yet, and it's making me unhappy because I came here to photograph Eevees. Not gonna lie. But yeah, it's a really cute game. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing some more tonight. All right, also adding some shading just under the bottom lip there. Um, I might just... Just gonna make it a little bit more subtle in those corners. There we go, just a little blended out. Lovely, so once again, we're gonna grab that purple and we're gonna start applying some shadows to elsewhere on the face as well. Uh, we are gonna put shadows under the chin, like so. Some shadows kind of cast by the hair, which I think is going to be a dark blue. Um, ba, 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 ba. 
Yeah, so we we have a lovely kind of black to dark purple hair colour going on, which is really exciting. There we go, so there's a little bit of shading there. I'm also going to pop some shadow up in the hairline, um, just kind of being cast by these curls coming down. And a little bit of shadow just coming around the front of the ear there, and then we can actually shade the rest of the ear. Okay, there's some basic shading uh, going on up there, then I'm just going to put a little bit down on the shoulder and the neckline. There we go, keeping it simple for this style, and then we're ready to drop a shade darker. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Verma. That, that should actually work, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, that, that wall forge was a delight. Okay, now, again, erring slightly more towards purple to select another slightly darker shadow shade. We are gonna use that to just add some deeper shadows in some slightly more restricted areas. Especially coming on the edge of the eyelids, um, kind of working from the edges towards the center but leaving the middles uh, kind of clear. You can kind of see the nice effect that has. Uh, I'm going to stick just a tiny bit on the kind of inner nose and a little tiny bit under the lips there. Uh, then I'm going to bring this darker shadow under the chin because that shadow tends to be quite heavy. And then just a little bit here, and then blending those two shadows together. And then, uh, I'm just going to add a little bit again down by the neckline and the shoulders. Whoops, did not mean to grab the stamp tool there. Um, and then taking it back up to shade the inner ear. Hey Stu, welcome. Wonderful, so there is the skin all nice and shaded. Um, one thing I will just do, I need to add a quick bit of highlight on the tip of the nose, you can kind of see inside this diamond. Just a little highlight there. Um, and then we can start working on some other aspects. So the next thing I want to do is the lips. Uh, these are going to share that nice rich purple that we've been using for shadows. I'm going to make it even so slightly richer, in fact, um, as the lips usually are a bit more vibrant than the rest of the skin. And we want to lean into this kind of, start leaning into the blue tones. Like so. Oh, good luck, Shark Lemons. <laughs> Head turnarounds are pretty tough, um, but you've got this. All right, slightly lighter um, version for the bottom lip. Kind of fading out as you get to the corners a tiny bit and then we can take that uh, top lip colour and use it to shade the bottom lip. And then I'm basically just going to go in and do a little bit of blending here and there to tidy up shape of the lip, which is usually kind of the way it goes. <laughs> Just a little, making those shadows a little bit softer, a little bit subtler, uh, like so. Uh, and then I'm going to add a bit of shine to these lips. We're going to grab a lighter tone. Um, just grab a really big brush for a second. Just to really uh, get them nice and nice and full and bright. Okay, 
going down that corner a bit. And then uh, blend in where we need to blend. Such so as those kind of edges of the highlight there. Lovely. Uh, I am actually just going to add a wee bit of shadow in the mouth corners. Just to uh, a little bit of character there. Kind of just a hint of a smile almost. Uh, and then finally, some brighter kind of highlights there. There we go. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to do the inside of the mouth now. Nice, another kind of quick thing to do. Uh, we want to grab a really dark colour for the bits that aren't teeth. Uh, so for there. And then for the teeth themselves, we're going to grab a nice... Uh, bright colour and pop that in. There we go. Another save because we don't want to lose the work we're doing. <laughs> oh, I haven't painted my Warhammer miniatures for a very long time. I have a, a whole box of Ideneth Deepkin that I started. I've got a couple of them painted, um, but I haven't been back to them for a while. And at this point, I'm almost too afraid to start again. I don't know if anyone else gets that feeling. It's like you have all this Warhammer. That you know you need to paint but it's just so much you know <laughs> it takes so long like i spend a whole day doing one mini and i ha when, when i have so many to do it's like uh, give me strength and that's using the contrast paints as well which speed up my time a bit i'm gonna adding a little bit more detail to these eyes just on the lids there delightful now they're really kind of nice and shiny um, hi, Orange Juice God, welcome to today's stream. I hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, let's do some eyes. So, my usual technique for eyes, I'm just gonna double check what colour her eyes actually are. Yeah, she has clear, icy blue, white pupils. So, with very pale eyes, I'm gonna use a slightly different approach. We're gonna start with a pale purple. And this will be a bit experimental, I haven't painted eyes like this for a little while. But that's half the fun, you know, I like to experiment and uh, do things different ways. <laughs> hey, Liberia Arcano, it's going well, thank you. I'm happy that it's Friday. Uh, I hopefully am going to have a full weekend off work, which would be great. I take two days off. Um, and I'm going to do some gardening. I have a massive pit in my garden, which I need to fill with rocks. <laughs> We have like a pond that we've been taking out because the last out owners of the house kind of they used it as a bit of a tip. Um, there was like last year's Christmas tree in there and it was just an absolute mess. Um, so we are in the process of removing it and we've got to get this awful gross rotten liner out and it's it smells so bad. I don't know if anyone has ever smelt what the bottom of a pond smells like but it is un uncomfortably unpleasant. Um, so that's what my weekend's shaping up to be and I actually don't mind too much because I just want to get it done so I can have a nice garden when it comes to summer. Um, because that's what I really want. I want somewhere I can just relax outside, the cold drink, you know. All right, adding it some bit of shading on the eyes here. It's super smelly, yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> and the liner's got like a hole in it, so it's all coming through anyway. But we still gotta get the damn thing out because it's super um, environmentally friendly to leave a liner in the mud. Um, so we do what we do. Okie doke, so for painting these lovely eyes themselves, as mentioned this character has icy blue eyes and almost clear pupils, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a nice mm, kind of mid to pale blue to get the ball rolling. Yeah, it smells so bad, right? Because that's basically what it is. It is all of the rot and kind of compressed dead plants and things that, yeah, have kind of been like compressed and rotted right at the bottom of the pond. And they've had a load of just normal earth on top of rages because the previous sellers half filled the pond without taking the liner out. Which means we not only have to like get the liner out, we have to empty all of this mud out first. Um, oh, and it takes so long. <laughs> I'm super lazy, you can tell. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a task. It's a chore. Um, on the other hand, it'll be super satisfying when we do it. All right, Icy Blue Eyes is the name of the game. We are gonna use this overlines layer I made a minute ago. Uh, we are going to 
grab an icier version of this color and we're actually going to have a lighter pupil than the surrounding eye which is a bit of fun I haven't done this for a while this will be fun okay uh, and then what we're going to do is I'm kind of the opposite of what I normally do with eyes which is I'm going to blend the bottom bit into the pupil area rather than making the top bit darker Same over here. And I'm only pressing extremely lightly right now because I don't want to use the full opacity of the brush. Very, very careful and gentle. There we go. All right, so we've got these very pale eyes. Um, I am just going to kind of tidy up the, um, where the purple meets the blue. Get a bit of a gentler, line there and kind of use this slight purple color as the ring around the outside making it a bit more gentle than how the line art was before hey amanda wookie i am yes i'm having a good day thank you i hope you are too um i'm looking forward to playing a lot of uh mtg arena this weekend one of my friends just got me back into mtg uh which was a terrible idea um because i secretly really love mtg and now i'm playing it again whoops Okay, this is a good start for these eyes. I want to bring in some more light though. So what we're gonna do is, again, grab yet another light color. And I'm just gonna ramp up the light on the bottom of these pupils. Like so. And what should I do next? <laughs> Yeah, thankfully, I'm, like I say, I'm playing MTG Arena, so it's a bit less expensive than playing physically, but when the new Forgotten Realm set comes out, I do really want to actually get some physical cards, so RIP my wallet. Right, we're just going to add some brightness to the iris here as well, really get the icy blue kind of going. And then big brush for a second. There we go. And then we have some nice icy, uh, icy eyes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in the really bright blue just on the edge there. And then kind of the same on the pupil on that side here. I want these eyes to really pop. Oh my goodness, they're kind of Gojo's eyes from Jujutsu Kaisen, aren't they? Oh no. <laughs> I just realized I love Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, Vaults. Oh, let's get this right. Uh, Vaults of Tirade. Um, This is a commission, actually. It's for a little, se uh, little set of characters. It's part of the same set if anyone saw me working on the Dragonborn character earlier this week. It's the same set as them. And uh, yeah, they are a lovely Eganassi, so. <laughs> um, yeah, you could definitely use this technique for ASMR as well. Um, in fact, I do something quite similar for ASMR. Um, you're right. Cool, so yeah, that's kind of all on that layer. So we're gonna go back down to our first layer to do the eyebrows. Now this uh, character has hair that's going to transition from a dark bluey black um, to a kind of a dark purple. So we're gonna start with a kind of purpley blue for the eyebrows. There we go, yeah, this will work quite nicely. Oh, it's all right, no, no, honestly, I use um, eyes like this for my um, ASMR as well. I quite like when I'm designing ASMR and tiefling characters, even though obviously the law says their eyes are solidly one color, um, I quite like ignoring that and making it so they still have a visible iris and pupil, but they're almost lighter than the sclera. So my, my tiefling character, um, uh, blah, 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 Riza has actually got kind of a kind of very dark green black sclera, which is usually what's white. Um, and then her irises are amber, like a cat. Uh, and she has like cat-like slit eyes, but then she was, she's very much inspired by manticores. So that's kind of why she's got cat-like vibes going on. <laughs> okay. Let's just grab a slightly lighter colour to highlight the eyebrows with and then we can get started 
on the hair. There we go, there are her eyebrows. Um, let's do the hair. Now the hair's gonna take me a little while to get the base colors down for, so let's just get cracking. I'm gonna start by grabbing that base dark blue that I had a moment ago. And I'm just gonna start by really just slapping it all over the canvas. Basically in all of the areas uh, where I know for sure hair is covering, just gonna start by coloring that in. Um, and then we get to the slightly more fiddly bit, which is going in slightly closer and kind of painting in detail, filling up to the edge of these lines. And I'm gonna start from the bottom uh, left, I'm gonna go all around in a circle to the bottom right. And I'm actually gonna end the edge of the hair here. And this doesn't need to be the be all and end all. I'm gonna add some uh, more loose um, kind of curls and strands once the base layers are done. This is kind of just to get us started. <laughs> Blue hair is great. I love painting colorful hair. It's, it always makes me very happy. Yeah, I, I agree there, uh, Aimless Wanderings. I always really like the character and emotions you can get through um, that you totally lose if you get rid of the um, the iris and the, and the pupil. Of course, it's fantastic for slightly more creepy characters. Uh, I also have another tiefling, uh, my girl Mercy, who ironically is not scary at all. Um, but she has solid kind of watermelon pink eyes. Like a, like a rabbit. <laughs> I'm also just a sucker for over designing characters. So if I can include uh, a slightly more dynamic eye style, I do because it gives me more to play with. Oh, I did actually want to fill that in. What am I doing? I literally forget my own intentions when it comes to art, like two minutes after I set them out. Very uh, inconsistent. <laughs> but not because I need to be. Okay, so just filling in these curls, but you don't need to go down to a tiny brush to do this. As long as you more or less fill the space, we're not being quite as careful here as we were with skin because the edges can look a little bit more fluffy um, whereas obviously with the smooth cheeks of the skin you want the um, uh, blah, 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 you want the kind of smooth edges uh, oh oh thank you so much Sutori what made you choose the name Talonir? so funny story about the uh, the kind of the origins of my my I guess my online kind of socials tag um, one my family well part of my family um, is from um, North Devon, which is an area in kind of south of England. It's very, very rural um, and kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And a lot of my family is from Ireland, um, but unfortunately we don't have much records of, of them. I, I find the kind of family history quite intriguing. And I wish I knew more about that side of my family, but I don't. Uh, but the side of my family I do know more about, um, way back, like a couple hundred years ago, used to have the surname Talon which was derived from the word Talonir, which used to mean someone who was a very skilled uh, swords person with like a saber or a rapier. Uh, and I thought that was really cool and badass and I was super nerdy about D&D at the time. So that's where the term, that's where the word kind of Talonir comes from. Uh, and that's, that's, yeah, that's why it's my username. And also it's, uh, tends not to be taken on, on like already as a username. So <laughs> that's also some bonus points. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The pen is the sword. Precisely. Sometimes it's quite therapeutic just filling in each of these curls, you know. You know, you don't need to kind of concentrate too hard. You can just go through and just fill each one in. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like there could be a cool story behind the username Shark Lemons, and uh, it doesn't need to be true, but I'd believe it. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, but Stu, my full name is quite boring, so... Well, my full name's not that boring, it's just... It's just a name, really, it's nothing particularly interesting. It's also like the super, like, most British sounding, like, white name ever. <laughs> My parents like to, like to name things out of film characters without realizing that they could have embarrassing implications in real life. So our, one of our dogs is called Boris after Arnold Schwarzenegger's character from True Lies, I think. I haven't even seen True Lies. Um, but most people just assume he's named after Boris Johnson, which is embarrassing as heck. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I stuck with it. Um, prior to settling on the name Talonir, uh, I used to constantly change my, my tag names, but that was before I really did a lot of social media. Um, I had some truly cringy usernames um, back when I used a lot of Fiction Press and Fanfiction.net. Ooh. I keep those hidden away. But yeah, there's a, you don't always have to have significance to your like, uh, like usernames and stuff. Like sometimes just it's like when I'm naming my D and D character. Sometimes I'll just pick a cool sounding name. <laughs> Most of the time when I'm naming D&D characters though, I overthink it massively. Um, and then it takes me genuinely forever to come up with a name that I don't not like. Like a name that I actually feel some attachment to, you know? Just gonna scribble over that, make sure the opacity's in. There we go, there is one side all filled in, just gotta keep moving around to the side. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of my old usernames used to be Pokemon related. Um, <laughs> my love of Pokemon hasn't changed. Oh, which reminds me. Um, in fact, this is completely unrelated, so sorry for my mind making these connections. Uh, Lezer, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and hopefully I will see you next week. Um, but yeah, so I listened to the new episode of The Adventure Zone, the new season yesterday and um no i won't give any spoilers or anything not that there's much to spoil at this point um uh, but now i really really want to run the quiet year it sounds like so much fun it sounds like exactly the kind of thing i would have gone absolutely wild for when i was a kid i used to love those kind of story prompt collaborative fiction games i still do it's just difficult to get people to sit down and play them but i i definitely want to have a crack at a quiet year now and like i saw a lot of people saying it wasn't really their jam but honestly I love hearing people work together to create something and especially when they sound enthusiastic about it and are having fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely want to do it at some point. Um, I, I kind of quite like the idea of using it to create something I could then go ahead and use in other things, kind of like what they've done. Um, so I'll probably have to wait until my current DM, DMing campaigns are over. But uh, it's definitely something I want to do in the future because it sounded lovely. Whoops. I keep accidentally grabbing the, the clone stamp tool instead of doing what I'm actually supposed to be doing. Um, the Quiet Year is a really interesting uh, kind of collaborative sort of storytelling, sort of world building uh, game. Um, and it's like for two to four players. I think, and you basically go around drawing cards as you uh, build a mini kind of civilization, sort of, like a, a bunch of kind of survivors after a great apocalypse or something's happened, and you kind of build this settlement, and it's really cute. Okay, we are new to there, everyone. But, you know, it pays to put the extra extra time into stuff like uh, hair once in a while. The other thing I'm 
in I'm really excited about is I should be getting my copy of the Root Tabletop RPG later this year. <laughs> Finally. I backed it so long ago. And I want to run it so bad. It looks like so much fun. Um, I've wanted to run a Power by the Apocalypse game for ages. Just because I love how much it takes the weight off the DM's shoulders when it comes to crunch. And it means I can go wild with storytelling. I'm also really looking forward to the uh, Avatar... Um, uh, TTRPG, which is of course also using um, Powered by the Apocalypse. That's gonna be great. There's just so many games coming out that I'm excited for. twisties to go. Yeah, so the Adventure Zone, they are playing the Quiet Year as a prologue to the actual game they're going to be running. Um, which I believe is going to be D&D &D 5e. Um, and they're using A Quiet Year to kind of help see what direction the store is going in and kind of the setting, which I find really cool. I really like making characters a, a big integral part of homebrew worlds. One of my biggest problems with playing in homebrew worlds is I find it quite hard to connect to them without context or like a reason to really care about wider histories it's not that i don't necessarily care about the homebrew world because that sounds really callous like i i super care about like the work obviously whoever's dming has put into it but it's quite hard to connect to something emotionally um when you've just been kind of introduced to it out of the blue and you're trying to learn everything about it cold i i like how it really brings the players in and are involved in the design process because at least for me uh, I find it quite sometimes, yeah, quite hard to connect to stuff out of out of the blue. Um, it would super help me really care about a world like a homebrew world to have gone through something like a quiet year first. Otherwise, yeah, it's quite difficult to, you know, really feel like what's your reason for adventuring and trying to do good. Like if this world doesn't really mean much to you, if that makes sense. <laughs> I haven't played Blades. Uh, that's one I'm definitely curious about. There's so many systems I need to play. And so little time in my life. Yeah, I think when I finish r uh, running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, I definitely want to give um, developing my own small area of a world ago once again. I, I really enjoy playing in the wild mount campaign setting. My hair is going over my face big time. Uh, and I actually using, I'm using wild mount for my Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign. Um, but I think it would be really fun to start, start doing a little bit more world building. I, I'm very, very shy about running games in worlds that I've made. Um, Cause I, I have done quite, quite a lot of it. I wrote a whole flipping 50,000 word um, kind of novel, like the first few chapters of a novel set in a world that I'd been working on a few years ago. I did NaNoWriMo basically. I've done NaNoWriMo a few times now um, and would love to kind of repurpose it for a TTRPG. Anyway, um, there we go. We have finished filling in the hair. That was no mean feat. Um, but there, I'm really fine with it. I'm pleased I kind of took the time to do that. So, uh, the next thing to do is we are going to need to shade it. Um, now, the most important thing about this hair is it has a cool colour graduation. So, what I'm going to start by doing is making sure it is alpha locked. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, unicorn dude. Uh, what I've done is, because Icefall Cross has so much craziness going on already, rather than set uh, Rhyme and Ten Towns in Icefall Cross, I basically stuck it in the Crystal Sands Tundra, far to the north of the Greying Wildlands. Um, and it's right on that northmost coast before you get to Isle Cross. Um, but I basically smacked the mountain range, the Spine of the World mountains, just below it. So kind of changed the topography a little bit. 
of the world mount map but all of my players uh, have done most of their games in world mount so they really care about the setting if that makes sense they know the gods really well they really care about like canon figures so they were able to connect to it a lot better because they were familiar with the world building um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's why I kind of set Rhyme there, and it's been really fun so far. I've brought in Volstrucker agents from, uh, from Rexentrum, they're tailing the party, I've got, um, kind of cool AO stuff is gonna come into it soon, which is going to involve Oriel, um, and obviously the Majorocracy city that's crashed into the glacier in Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Um, there's, like, lots of really cool stuff. Um, lots of really ways that, the um... A wild mount and rhyme really support each other like the whole aor and floating cities just completely supports the subplot of the obviously the mage cities that have crashed that you're delving into to get relics and stuff in rhyme so uh yeah um anyway i'm doing art i'm getting so excited about D. &D. <laughs> okay uh what i'm gonna do is we're gonna create a gradient we're going to add some more dark paint at the top of the hair and the hair fades out to a dark purple at the bottom um not so we don't want to go too light but similarly uh we want there to be a visible gradient so we're gonna go with something a little bit like this then we're going to go into blur just to get a nice gradient between the two like so and uh, once that is done, it's time to start shading in earnest. We make a new layer on top, we are going to create a flipper mask, we set it to multiply, and then we can begin. Now, this hair is very voluminous, so we're going to use a slightly different approach to what I usually do. As always, we are using the kind of pale pink magenta shading colour, and we're going to start by shading it as a whole, uh, adding shadows to areas that are obviously cast into shadow by the face. Ooh, Storm King's Thunder could be quite interesting in, in a wild mount. Yeah, I mean, I'd say give it a go if you can. If your players will enjoy it, then at the end of the day, it's worth a shot. That's kind of what I say to myself. And I, I enjoy um, wild mount a lot more than Forgotten Realms, I must admit. Okay, so I'm going to switch into a small brush and basically start adding some shadows between these curls. Like so. How are we doing? Okay, 50 minutes. <laughs> oh, very right. You'll get it. Don't worry. I, um, I, I was terrified before I first GM'd. Um, absolutely terrified. And it went pretty well. That being said, they weren't like the best most reciprocate I, I i tend to find that i need a group that's really reciprocates the hype you know i get quite excited when i'm dming and i need a group that really throws that back at me and also gets excited about twists um and about what happened what might happen to their characters like i need that i need that visceral kind of like hype and i like to see my players talking about the game afterwards especially when i put a lot of effort in like i I need to see my effort kind of reflected back at me because I crave constant, uh, constant praise and attention. <laughs> um, but no, I, I did find a group this year which are really good for that. Um, and we bounce ideas off each other an awful lot, which is wonderful. Yeah, I find it very easy to feel insecure as a DM if I, if I'm not sure my players are having fun. Um... So I, I do get the anxiety part of things. But if you've got an enthusiastic group who appreciate what you're doing for them, uh, and that you put so much effort into running a fun story, then you'll have a good time, I promise. Uh, are those plants behind me? There is a Monstera. My beautiful Monstera is, is over there. <laughs> um, well, my little Monstera. I've got a massive one downstairs that's not quite as happy because it's not quite as bright down there. Um, if you want to see a lot of plants, I don't know if I can actually move my camera without destroying my setup. Um, but if you if you request a, a house plant family, I probably have it and I can show it to you. <laughs> my plants like right on my next to me on my right here. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what is my favourite hairstyle to draw or paint? Oh my gosh. I, I can't answer this because I love painting lots of different hairstyles. So my ideal hairstyle to paint would be any hairstyle that's different to the last one I painted, if that makes sense. I like to, uh, when I'm picking what commissions to work on next, I like to shake things up. I, I don't like to paint the same thing twice in a row or I kind of get burnt out and bored. Um, so I, I try to paint different stuff when I can. Yes, nearly done with this shading. Um, then we're going to go in and add some nice little highlights and uh, yeah, get some kind of light going. totally agree that your group makes such a big difference to to dming for me it, it really does um okay um yes yeah, so we want to do highlights yeah i'm gonna do this on a new layer um i'm going to grab slightly lighter color than what i've been working with and it's finally time to pick up my favorite hair rendering brush whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, thank you so much rdm and victoria for the follows uh i hope you hope you enjoy the stream so uh, the brushes I use to render hair are the Lewin Fur Brushes set. Uh, check it out on Google, you can download it from Gumroad. Um, I think it's pay what you want, so throw some cash to the creator if you can. Um, and I find it's wonderful for rendering hair. And basically we're just going to pick out all these kind of uh, curls that are facing up towards the light. and. Uh, give them some more light. <laughs> Obviously as we move down in the gradient we're gonna have to grab lighter colours but we can do that as we get there. Okay so now we're gonna go a bit lighter. Especially on these little edge curls, we want to make sure that they're nice and bright. And then once again, we get to the point where we need to grab a lighter highlight colour. Oh, what was the name of the brush again? Uh, it is called the Lewin Fur Brushes Set. Uh, I think Lewin is the name of the artist. They're a fairly well-known um, artist, so they probably have done a set of brushes for uh, Cook Studio Paint. At least I would have thought so. A lot of the time you can actually import brushes between the two now, can't you? Let's get a little bit lighter. Is that a bit lighter still, I think? There we go. But yeah, something very therapeutic about shading hair, um, once you don't hate doing it anymore. I used to absolutely hate painting hair in all its forms, and it wasn't until I kind of started to get the hang of it that I started enjoying it. <laughs> uh, and now it's probably one of my favourite parts of, um, my, my favourite things in character design to, to do actually is probably hair now. suggesting more kind of curls inside the uh, the main ones. And then just carrying on finally down to these bottom curls, uh, adding this light in. Like so, and then we're going to repeat that whole process on the other side. I'm going to make sure we're set to current, so I make sure I grab the right colours. Then 
This brush just speeds up the hair rendering process so much, I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, I need to jump up to a slightly larger one. This one's so just about speed, it has just a really nice shape that default photo brushes don't have. Um, default photo brushes are pretty basic, uh, that being said I use one of the default photo brushes for almost all of my painting. <laughs> um, but it can be really fun to experiment with with custom photoshop brushes. Bleh, brushes. <laughs> Just going to put some kind of contrasting direction twists in there as well otherwise it'll look a bit too uniform for this character very kind of wild and free air ganassi vibes here okay let's grab that slightly lighter version and continue on Now we can change up again, slightly more uh, saturated version as we get towards the brighter purple. I'm very excited. I This morning when I dropped my partner off at work, I bought a really fluffy blanket. <laughs> we, um, we had our, our sofa finally arrive this week for our new place and um, I wanted to get a really fluffy throw blanket to go with it so that in the evening when I'm playing on the Switch I can get really nice and cozy. <laughs> and I'm totally gonna snuggle underneath the blanket tonight, eat KFC and play Pokemon Snap and it's gonna be a good time. Oh, uh, but can you quickly describe what you do for hair from this point? Um, absolutely, so basically once I finish doing all these highlights um, sometimes I will do another pass of highlights, uh, I'm probably not going to here, um, but that's kind of it for the hair process. Uh, right at the end there'll be a stage where I'll put on an overlay layer, however uh, that should be all in the VOD, which I'm going to make sure both VODs for this week are up uh, tonight, um, so you'll be able to kind of watch exactly kind of what I do at that point. Uh, often I'll put an overlay, uh, an overlay layer um, with a Gaussian blur on it, just to give in a little bit more light variation, a bit more tone um, on kind of the very top. Um, but yeah, you kind of see that's with all the highlights and without. They kind of make quite a big difference. Um, so yeah, at this point, well, one th other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch to all layers. I'm going to go back to my original brush, really small sides of it though, and just add in some extra um, kind of loose curls just to break up the, the silhouette. A little bit especially like down here and um, they yeah they stop the shape looking quite so uniform and make it look a little bit more natural and it's just a small touch but it can just add a little bit more shape into the hair um, and yeah, so one of the other things I need to do for this character is she has kind of blue markings on her forehead leading into her hairline. Um, with a purple tint, yeah, dark blue spots near the hairline. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a layer clipped to um, our skin. We're going to grab a nice rich blue. I think we're going to start with multiply and go from there um, and see how it goes. Oh, I say Ganassi and Janassi um, in equal measure. Most of the time, it's um, most of the time I will say Ganassi. Don't know why. Hard consonants, perhaps, are my preference. No idea why that might be. Um, but I don't really mind. Both are valid to me. So you want to push this towards blue a little bit. So once we've kind of worked out the color we want. Then I'm just going to start experimenting with these. I mean, the commissioner said very vaguely blue spots in the hairline. I don't want them to look like scales. I want them to look a little bit more um, elegant than scales. 
Um, so I'm just gonna experiment with some markings. And they disappear into the hairline. I like kind of being left open, open-ended things like this to play with. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, this chick twenty-five for the three hundred bits. That's incredibly kind. Um, thank you, thank you very, very much. I'd rather this look more like a, a pattern rather than scales. So I'm gonna introduce some other, other kind of teardrop shapes in. I think. That's the other thing, right? I don't want this to look like scales because then that's almost more like a water ganassi. And then I'm just going to neaten those uh, markings there up a little bit. Just kind of play with the shapes while we're here. Just have a bit of fun with it. And I think the central one, the sneeze one, needs to move over a tiny bit. Yeah. And then we can just slice off the sides a bit. Uh, and what we can also do is we can just kind of warp the whole thing. So let's say I wanted to change the positioning a little bit like so. I could do that. I quite like using this tool to do that sort of thing. Uh, and then what I can also do is, you know, if I was feeling like I want this to go a different way, I can make those lighter. Oops. Ba, ba, ba. Or I could just use overlay to also make them darker, but a little bit more subtle. I quite like that. It's more subtle and works better for me, I think. Just some kind of like basic little markings that come around the side. Um, yeah, I think this is kind of working for me. Dark blue spots up by the hair. Like maybe I do want to make these more like spots rather than like. No, I don't know, I kinda like kinda like what I've got going here. Ah, decisions, I'm so bad, I'm so indecisive. <laughs> it still looks like a pattern actually. No no no, this is okay. I've actually almost seen a pattern that wasn't there before, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and add that in. I'm gonna, uh, again, current layer this. And rather than, yes, yeah, so we've kind of got this zigzag that's coming around here. And I just want to look, not like flowers, but a little bit more yeah, a little bit more patterned than it was before. This is one of those things I experiment with. <laughs> Just cut down those edges a little bit. And then... Now I think I'm at the point where these are too big. Constantly changing my mind. Yeah, that's a bit better. They almost look a little bit like snowflakes, and I like that. Uh, but again, I think it still needs to be rotated a bit. Maybe this time we've done it this way. <laughs> um, 
And maybe I should just make it bigger, you know? Yeah, that works for me. <laughs> Chef Lemons, thank you so much. I actually have a, another emote which isn't in place yet. Um, because I haven't quite finished it. It's an emote for Riza, my barbarian. Um, and hopefully I'll have that done soon. Uh, which reminds me, while we're here, we can tidy up the skin layer a little bit. I'm just going to erase down the edges where it kind of overlaps with the hair. Uh, we've got a bit of that going on over here. Not too much. Mostly it's been pretty clean, actually. Even this era is quite nice. Oh, what might be fun is to bring a little bit of that blue onto the ear. <laughs> yeah, like that. Um, and then we can basically just add this blue tinge in a few other places too. Um, kind of from the back of the neck. A little bit in the eyes, because why not? It's fun. And I think in the top lip as well. Hmm, maybe that's a bit intense. Just cut it down a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, um, so the next stage is to do her clothing. Now, this character is a cleric of Saloon. Um, so that's the, the moon goddess in Forgotten Realms, I believe. So we've got a, uh, a dark blue and silver hooded cloak and shades of blue. So we're going to do the cloak, a nice dark blue with silver. And then this, you can see the very top of what she's wearing underneath. That will be lighter. So we'll start with the dark blue cloak. Just kind of grabbing. Um, just this colour will do us for now. Again, I'll probably change it um, because I'm indecisive. <laughs> Just painting up to those edges. And then making sure it all joins around so that I can just fill it like this. And then take a large brush and paint over all these little lines. Whoops. Just gonna Take that out where I say painted over it a bit. <laughs> Lovely, so there is our base colour. I actually don't hate that as a colour. It's gonna get a bit more purple because we're gonna shade it now. So we're gonna add on a clipping mask, set to multiply, and we are going to drop in this pink colour. Uh, so just filling the whole space and then switching to a white paint brush, we are actually going to remove shadow in places the light is going to touch. And I've got hair yeah, stuck in my glove and it's, there we go. Uh, yeah, like this. And we've kind of got light shining from a few different fronts. We're going to have a bright light source coming in from the side, which I haven't quite popped in yet. Um, so we want to make sure that we do get rid of some of those front shadows. We've got more shadow going on at the back, so it's going to get definitely darker towards the back. Uh, then we can basically grab a darker version of this pink to shade areas. No, hang on. <laughs> Let's just switch those around, switch through. Uh, yeah, there we go. To shade areas that are in a lot of shadow. There's a few kind of folds and creases where the shadows really kind of pull together that we want to take care of. Um, but yeah, that's basically that. And I did realise that this bit around her neck is actually part of the garment underneath. So we're actually going to erase this. And uh, we do need to put some silver trim. That'll be fun. Let's do that next. So we're going to do some silver trim. We are going to grab um, a dark kind of purpley grey to start off with. Oh, 
fantastic. Well done, Shark Lemons. I am sure it looks awesome. Um, we're basically going to trim the blue with this grey to start with, which is going to become our silver. And it's going to go all the way around the bottom of that hood. And I'm also going to have some on the lower side coming down and around here. Uh, I might even add just a really gentle uh, pattern, just fairly, uh, a fairly generic um, kind of moon pattern, I guess. <laughs> Without going too detailed, because obviously this is a slightly simpler portrait than I often do. There we go. Um, and I'm going to leave the bottom side. Um, basically, once we've painted that in with um, the dark grey, we can switch up and work our way up the spectrum using lighter shades of this kind of gentle purpley grey colour um, to add highlights to the silver. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing that to get that metallic kind of feel to it. And then uh, once we've kind of done that, I'm going to go back to the overlines layer and just do a little bit of extra brightness by hand. Um, because adding in a, just kind of tidying stuff up by hand will almost always result in a, a tighter end result, you know? There we go, there's that nice little sheen there. We'll do the same on the bottom. And then coming across the top. And finally on the other shoulder. itchy eyes. They have the nice kind of uh, a nice bright sheen. I'm gonna grab this very light uh, purple as well just to add some light here um, on the side that is getting some light but not quite as bright. You'll kind of see what I'm about to do there in a minute um, but first I am going to possibly sneeze. No? No sneeze? Oh, okay, no, I did sneeze. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Um, and then we will do the last bit, which is the clothing she is wearing underneath her hood. Uh, which I'm going to do again, I'm going to push this blue a little bit more in this direction. Almost slightly more an aqua to match her eye colour. I love all the shades of blue in this character, goodness gracious. Here we go. And then we are going to stick a clipping mask on that as well. Uh, same kind of uh, very light pink colour. Fill it all in and then erase where the light is hitting. There we go. Fairly simple. Uh, but there we go. We are almost finished with this character now. It's just a few little tweaks I would like to make. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recolor some of the line art. So I'm going to go to the line art layer, uh, make sure I'm uh, setting it to the outer lock again. I'm going to grab a fairly rich mid shade of pink and I'm going to use that to paint over the line art because I find line art looks a lot better if it's in the same kind of color group as what it's on top of. Um, so that's what we're doing there, just recolouring that line art. I'm going to also add it to the bit underneath the eyes and the top eyelid. I don't want to go over the eyelashes or they'll lose kind of their nice dark contrast. Uh, I'll put a little bit on the shoulder there, but the rest of it's mostly going to um, keep with its original colour. I'm going to add some lighter lines to some of that blue. Oh, I've got a runny nose now, gross. And also on some of these lower curls, just kind of around the edge to make it look a little bit more gentle. Um, and there we go. 
last thing I'm going to do, I mentioned earlier we were going to add a little bit of um, overlay onto this and that's what we're going to do. Uh, Kalia Crow, what size canvas do I usually work on? For this piece, this is a uh, A4 canvas set to 300 dpi. Um, I don't think I've resized it since I started, that's usually what I use for portraits like this. Um, uh, so yeah, that's basically what's going on there. So, time to make a layer above our group, set it to clipping mask as per usual. Uh, we're going to do an overlay layer, and I'm kind of thinking I want this light to be blue, because it kind of fits with the character vibes that we have. Um, we've got this air ganassi kind of ephemeral. So, uh, switching to, yeah, 20, 26 is a good. We're just basically going to add some light to certain areas. And this is going to help bring out the shape of the face a bit. Gently going around the chin, adding a tiny bit on these lips as well. And then we can also use it to outline the nose a tiny bit. And of course, uh, the neck coming down there. Then the same thing is going to happen with the front of the shoulder and the front of the clothing. Uh, this is where my computer starts to chug a bit. There we go. And finally, we're going to add some of this light to the hair. I'm going to get a much larger brush and a very gentle touch, just going around these edges. Just this front edge that the light is kind of focusing on. Like so. And the very last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that layer I just made. Um, there we go. As you can see, it's a bit too bright. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick a blur on it. Uh, and it's going to just gently kind of affect that whole side of the face. And what I might do is I'm just going to go in minimize a little bit of uh, this light here just to make it a bit more gentle and there we have it there we have our air ganassi uh, cleric and uh, yeah pretty pleased with how she turned out so let's save before we lose everything <laughs> oh my goodness sylvanix thank you so much for the donation that's incredibly kind i hope you have a truly lovely weekend and i am very very grateful that's gonna that's going straight towards our, our food for this weekend so thank you so much <laughs> all right yeah I, i'm very pleased with her I, I especially really like uh what we did with the hair there that's come out nice uh so on to the next thing we've got another like 10 20 minutes so we are going to get started on the next thing i have to work on <laughs> which is the line art for this awesome uh elven this is particularly a dark elf ranger character uh, and yeah, I basically just need to get started on her lineup. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, just merge this group. I haven't done that yet. Uh, we're going to make that a lot smaller. And I don't remember whoever it was asking about canvas sizes earlier. Well, I'm about to resize this canvas ready for painting uh, and lining. So the canvas we're going to jump up to, she's quite detailed. So I think we're going to need a 330 size canvas. Possibly bigger, we'll see how I feel when I start doing the line art. Um, so yeah, wait for that. Lovely. This is kind of what it looks like 100%. So we might end up needing to go a bit bigger, but we shall see. So I'm going to make a new layer, I'm going to call it a line art. Set it to multiply, of course, and grabbing a size. Hmm, I think I'm going to start with a 7, you know? And then I tend to grab about 2 thirds down into grey is where I start my line art. And uh, the first place I usually start is with the cheekbones uh, and the jawline. Uh, in this case, we've got some hair covering a bit of the jaw, so I'm just going to suggest the corner of that before I then bring the jawline in. And when I'm doing a line art, I am, I'm barely touching the canvas. It's a very, very, very light touch uh, because I don't want my line art to be too heavy. Sometimes you can get with heavy lines where there's going to be a lot of shadow, such as in the jaw. Uh, in this case, it's too heavy. 
So I'm just going to erase a little bit, really, really gently, barely touching anything. Um, that's kind of how it goes with uh, with with line art, you know. And can I see the side of the jaw comes up there? Uh, we've got a lot of hair framing this character's face, but we'll pop the ear in. Like so. Uh, and then we've kind of got the inner ear there. Gonna have kind of like the little Y shape comes up there and then side of the bottom ear there. Cool. Um, next, uh, ooh, I think I'll do the other ear. Again, it's just, I, I tend to do the hair afterwards uh, because I compartmentalize the way I work on things weirdly. <laughs> there you go, just kind of see the edge of that there. Uh, and yeah, we're probably going to move straight on to the facial features. So I'm going to drop down to a size 5 and just get on with the facial features. This character has kind of uh, a slightly morose, kind of like pouty look to them, uh, which was quite fun to do. To often get characters with that description. Uh, how is Rita doing? Oh, well. Um, we had our game last week and it was pretty darn perfect. Basically, we were in the sewers of Sadash, uh, tracking a rival crime syndicate. Obviously, you may remember Riza is a part of the, um, Gentleman's Troop, or what was the Gentleman's Troop before he retired, uh, because our campaign is kind of set 20 years after the events of, um, the Mighty Nine. Um, and we are in the sewer looking for the looking for a kidnapped member of uh, our organization uh, because it seems the rest of the party may have accidentally been drafted into the myriad as well but you know we pay really well we pay our freelancers well uh, with better than the crowns guard do anyway so we're kind of the more appealing prospect <laughs> i actually don't really need that triangle there um but yes we end up in these sewers and we come across one of the kind of division leaders for this rival gang, which are called the Blue Blades. And he's in this nasty, nasty kind of sewer room. He's clearly an alchemist of some kind, uses poisons. And we basically, I say we, I should say I, uh, because Reza, Reza rushes in. Uh, Riza rushed in because she has crazy movement speed and can crawl across ceilings, so wasn't really obstructed by uh, the rivers of sewage in between us. Um, and she basically dropped down next to this this evil dude, uh, got an attack off, and then spent the rest of the session pretty much grappled in one way or another. To start with, she was grappled by a bladed whip from this nasty dude. Uh, then a great big sewer monster, who was clearly the pet of this individual, crawled up out of the sewage with tentacles. I think it was a uh, Utioch. Uh, I'm trying to remember how it's pronounced. <laughs> hey, Zero Sum Game, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, but yeah, she spent the rest of the combat grappled by um, the Utioch upside down. Uh, and because it was kind of better, rather than escaping the grapple and using her action, to just keep slashing at it because she could take the damage quite easily. Um, so she just kept hacking at this creature upside down in a very Drax-esque from Guardians of the Galaxy sort of style. And then the best thing happened, um, the paladin that she has a massive crush on got grappled by the same Utioch. So we were both hanging upside down in the grasp of this awful sewer monster. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then finally Riza manages to land the killing blow which was just a great moment for her showing off um, and not only did she do that she did the the classic move where uh, landed the killing blow was dropped by this creature passed her athletics check well enough so that the DM basically let her land Captain Jack style with like one leg on each of the jaws of the monster and then catch her paladin crush in her arms so it was pretty great uh it turned out quite well for her in the end <laughs> um so yeah good progress on the wooing the paladin front 
Um, yeah, the Paladin is an ASMR, so it's it's a great dynamic of Tiefling and ASMR vibes. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna make this pupil a little bit deeper to match the other one. That's better, and now we can start doing some line art for the hair. I'm not gonna make a new layer for this because the hair seems to frame almost all the face. I am gonna jump up to a size six, and we will begin. But yeah, I've never actually fought an Utiok in D&D before, so that was cool. Had this horrible poison ability, but thankfully my constitution is great, so I was able to tank it. Which is unusual for me, usually I play characters with garbage constitution. Okay, so we've basically got this really big fluffy white hair. For this character. Um, in fact, it, it's kind of like waist length, but you only see some of the front strands. In fact, let's just finish popping in some of these front strands while we're here. Honestly, I didn't think I would enjoy playing Barbarian half so much as I actually ended up doing. It has been an absolute blast. Um, especially the Beast subclass has made me so happy. Um, it's just it's all the vibes that I love from characters like that. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. There's loads of angst as well when you're a Barbarian because you're different. Like, where did where did you come? Where did your Barbarian path come from? Is it one of? Is it like kind of Yasha from Critical Role? It was kind of thrust upon you. Um, in my case, my character is shamelessly inspired by Kipo from Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, so she's a bit of a lab experiment, um, which is why she's got the Path of the Beast features. There we go, there's one nice long lock of hair going down there. Um, but yeah, Barbarian is super fun, I, I definitely heartily recommend it. Just add a bit of edge of the face there. Um, what else am I playing? I, I'm also playing a sorcerer. Uh, for the first time I played my drill Dragonborn, that little dragon, um, kind of raptor dragon inspired Dragonborn you might have seen me post recently. Uh, I got to play her last night in her first ever session. Um, utterly terrifying session. I thought I was going to get killed by lava many times. But uh, the lava was an illusion all along after we all spent all of our spell slots to avoid it. <laughs> um, so that was really fun. Um, I, I kind of love it when DMs spring twists like that on you. It's like, ah oh, yes, the deadly thing that you've been trying to avoid for like half the session. It wasn't real. You wasted all your spell slots. Now roll the initiative. I thought that was very, very rude to do that, but I loved it. <laughs> Let's get these nice fluid uh, curls coming in. I really like doing wavy hair like this. Funnily enough, sometimes I find that completely straight hair can be one of the hardest types to get looking nice because um, it can be harder to add depth with straight hair, I find, than curly hair. Just gonna kind of have that trail off into the main body of the hair, I think. Have I ever fought Aboleth? I haven't, no. I've got a feeling that Aboleth are quite high level, high, like, um, difficulty enemies, right? Am I right? Because I've never actually played a 5e character that's got above, not in a long term campaign anyway, that's got above like level 7. Um, I think I played level 11 once, but it was only for like two games. So I didn't really get to make the most of it. Um, right now I'm just drunk on power being level 7 as Reza. So goodness knows what happens. I think at level 8 I get her next second feature which is the rabid bite, which is going to be wonderful. Okay. Just going to add a tiny bit more to this hair down here. And 
time is it? Oh, it's that time already. And I think uh, this is probably where I'm going to leave it for today. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'm just going to go back to this this character since this is the one I mostly worked on this stream. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. It was lovely to work with you all. I'm going to pop some links in chat. Uh, first up is my Twitter. Uh, this is where you can see a lot of my finished work as well as updates about when I'm streaming or any giveaways I might be doing, commissions, all that kind of info can be found on my Twitter. Uh, next up, I also have Instagram. Um, less information on there, more just art posts, miniature painting, costume making, lots of plant photos lately. <laughs> but uh, do give me a follow on Instagram if any of that is remotely interesting to you. Uh, next up, ArtStation is the place to go if you purely want to take a look at uh, my portfolio. Um, oh, thank you so much, Hecla Linia. That's very, very kind. <laughs> uh, thank you as well to Skitty Smith for the follow. Uh, next up, YouTube. Uh, both VODs from today and Wednesday will be up on my YouTube channel, hopefully by the end of today. If not, they will be up this weekend, so do please bear with me. There's a few other things on my YouTube as well, but I will be adding some fun stuff soon, so keep an eye on that. Uh, next up, the music for my stream is uh, all by an artist named Kai Engel. It's very lovely, ambient, royalty-free music, so definitely check it out. It's very chill and relaxing. It's just good vibes, you know. Um, oh, what next? I think we are through to Patreon. Uh, if you want to support my work, Patreon is a wonderful way to do it. There are various rewards at different tiers on Patreon, from commission priority to exclusive artwork, uh, works in progress. A couple of step-by-step uh, step -step tutorials on there as well. I really want to do another one soon. I'm just kind of deciding what I want to do it for. Um, but yeah, until next time, I will be streaming again next week on Wednesday at 5pm BST, I think, whatever current UK time is. Um, you can find me here at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Until then, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Uh, look after yourselves, stay safe, and just, you know, chill out. Take some time for yourselves, and I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye!